uh, Matt on YouTube is saying uh, his company uses the old MBAM. So how can I use BitLocker management from SCCM or move BitLocker to Intune? Um, which one is the best? Um, might let you start out with that one, Johan, if you've got anything to add, um, because I haven't really used those tools. Um, uh, well, 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 I have. I, I was actually working on a migration with a customer that, that reached out, and uh, they had gotten a quote for another company how much uh, time it would take to uh, convert them from using MVAM over to, uh, to BitLocker Management and Config Manager. And the quote was, yeah, it's going to take seven days, so 56 M hours uh, at a stupid rate, basically. And I'm like, no, so you just need to get rid of your group policies. And then you create new policies in Config Manager, and then you're pretty much done. <laughs> uh, we did it in three hours, <laughs> end to end. So it's actually fairly simple, and Maurice has one of the better posts on the topic. Um, he did a, like a three-part series on going from MBAM to BitLocker Management. Um, yeah. So if you haven't seen these, this is basically a step-by-step -step what you have to do to do that journey. Um, as long as you verify that there are no active directory group policies left, you also need to modify your sequences because the escrowing is different of the key during deployment. Um, and it took Buxot actually a good while to add in escrowing for BitLocker management. So if you have a config manager site server like this one here, where I have um, enabled uh, BitLocker management and, and uh, started to uh, create all these policies that you need here uh, for the different disks and whatnot. Then in your sequence, what you have to do is simply go to your BitLocker step. Uh, this one here. And force it to use instead of what you may have used before, because it didn't support it, you now have to select this one here. And this will put them into the config manager database. And uh, as we mentioned earlier here in this office hours, it will be encrypted, unlike MBAM, where all the recovery keys were not encrypted in the MBAM database. Uh, you can still hash them out with a PowerShell script if you really need to look them up outside of the, uh, the normal uh, help desk portal that is still here available. But it, it's not too bad to go through the journey of changing from MBAM to BitLocker management. And in general, I would recommend going that approach, even though it's like no immediate need for it. The second uh, MBAM is still going to be around. Originally, it was only to April 2024, but they increased that until 2026 or something to give organizations time to, to migrate over. Uh, some organizations, they simply switch that workload over to Intune, etc. But if you're using a lot of imaging, config manual, and whatnot, well, it kind of makes sense to, to have it here as well. Um, yeah. So have you um, played around much with, with uh, using Intune and Azure AD for that management? Because in a particular scenario that I've been looking at recently, having not had those tools, I've just been following a couple posts from uh, Brooks Pepin that really does a really nice job of spelling out how to go through the configuration of Intune, uh, BitLocker no, that, that, with Intune. No, no, there is a good chunk of organizations using Intune only for BitLock management. And yeah. Brooks post that is covering the, the best practices part, I think he only actually had that in his title. Do you happen to have that post up somewhere? Yeah, I've got um, two that I've been uh, referencing, actually. All right, let me... Uh, how about that? Yeah. Yeah. So here he's got a beginner's guide to managing BitLocker with Intune. Um, I haven't seen that one, but I saw the, the one that had like a best practice in its title. Is it this one? Three things you should know? I think so. So this has um, things like how to escrow uh, existing keys to Azure AD, managing multiple keys on an Azure AD object. Uh, Automatic encryption requires a logged-in user. Uh, so there are some good 
recommendations here on how to do some uh, operational type things. Um, was there maybe another one you were thinking of as well? Well, good Lord. Uh, I probably was that one. I was in my mind, it had the word best practices in the title, but it probably didn't because I cannot find it. Okay. Or maybe it was the Twitter thread that was uh, covering it. Well, and I do know in this beginner's guide as well, he talks about what I I think I would consider some best practices um, in regards to some of the base settings that he recommends within the policy, uh, as well as encryption methods and, and things like that. I think this is the post where you may talk about. Yeah, that's the one. That's a bunch of screenshots of the recommended configurations. Okay. Yeah. yeah yes. That's so the one. yeah. This My is bad uh, on the title. Yeah. Oh, that's that's all right. So I'll, I'll I'll make sure that we get these uh, get these links out there. But this beginner's guide is sort of what we've been following through, um, because it does have a lot of those uh, a lot of those things in here. You know, where you, you look at this policy, and if you don't know a ton about BitLocker, it can definitely be overwhelming. Um, and I think Brooks does a really good job of describing not only what you should set here, but why, in his opinion, you should set it. Yeah, and he, he actually had a little thread. I just posted a link in the chat to you there, Andrew. You can bring it up on, on your screen. Um, uh, things that could be improved. So if there is anyone from, from the Intune team happen to watch this episode, uh, here's some homework that you might be interested in, in, in looking into. But just some improvements in general, and I, I thought they were quite, uh, quite brilliant. Yeah, that's good stuff.